Hello and a very warm welcome to Crucial Choice, the only show of its kind on careers in higher education. I'm your host, Raj. Times are changing, and rapidly so. What might have been okay when I was at high school definitely is not okay today. By the time most students are out of high school, they already know what choice of career they want to pursue. Today's episode is about design and architecture. Design is something that touches us at every moment of our lives. Problem is, we never stop to notice it. It is taken for granted. But with me today are three youngsters who are quite sure about what they want to do. Welcome to Crucial Choice, Mahek, Ruth, Tihami. Uh, I think you know what the show is all about. We're hoping to inspire other students with your stories and insights about careers and higher education. Uh, let me start by asking each of you to introduce yourselves. Uh, Tihami, if you'd like to go first. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Tihami and I'm planning on pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in Graphic Design. Thank you. My name is Ruth and I plan on doing interior designing, but I'm going to do a foundation in design first. Um, my name is Mahak and I plan on doing architecture, preferably in the US. Okay, thank you. Um, let me start with my first question. Who'd like to go first? I go. Okay. okay. Tihami, what kind of a mindset does it take to be a designer? I think the most important mindset would be to be able to adapt to change because design is an evolving um, industry. Not everybody has the same style and just because everyone does have the same style doesn't mean you have to have the same style, right? So you need to be able to change and make something different and be able to initiate a new style that other people can look up to. Interesting because, you know, sometimes when you, when you associate design, you don't necessarily associate it with fast moving and innovation and change. Ruth, do you agree or disagree? Uh, I agree with what he said because uh, in design you need to have an open mind because like he said the world is changing and everyone has a different perspective of everything and design is creativity and creativity has no boundaries. In, in sometimes in certain things you, you have to have the ability of perhaps being able to sell yourself. You know your idea may not be welcomed by everybody. Because as you said, you know, you have this imagination. Does everyone agree with it? So do you think there's any sort of other soft skills you might need as a designer? Do you think you ever need to market yourselves? Do you think you need people to sort of buy into what you're thinking? Do you think persuasion skills, any of that? Or? The thing about design is it's like art, right? So just be not everybody likes the same painting. Some people don't like it, right? So just because some people don't like my work doesn't mean it's not good. Everyone has their taste. So depending on what you're doing or who, who's your client, you need to work with them and their style. Okay. So say you produce something and uh, someone doesn't like it. Is your opinion going to be, okay, it's not for you, I'm just going to move away and you know what, I'll find someone that does like me or do you think you might spend some time saying a little bit about you know, where I'm coming from, this is what my intention was? Or if you're a freelance artist and you're creating or designing something, then you don't have to explain to people what you're doing because it's like the right people will understand what you're trying to do. Yeah, that's well put. So there's a multi multifaceted side to what you do. Okay. Mike, so what qualifications would you need to become an architect? You know, does one be, can I go tomorrow and say I'm gonna, I can be an architect or would I need to follow a certain path? Um, you definitely need to follow a certain path because from research I've found that every place, every country has their own criteria that you need to fit into. So like in the UK, you need, you, there are three parts to be a qualified architect to practice. So there's like two years of university, then there's, there has to be a work experience to get the second part and then lastly you have to have a test to get your full certificate saying that you can practice architecture. So I'm looking at a career in interior design. What's my path? What qualifications will I need? 
So I'm doing a foundation so that I get a better perspective on interior designing and that's going to better my skills to go into interior designing. And, and how long do you think it will take me to become a, an interior, interior designer? Oh, uh, Without a foundation year, it's 3.5 years. Three and a half years? Yeah. Okay. But with a foundation, it's four. Okay, you plan on doing a foundation? Yes, it's much better. Okay, why do you say it's better? So, foundation is better when you get, because you get to know everything. You get to know graphic design, photography, or interior designing, basic design. Uh, so, if you want to change, you can go to graphic design or interior designing, but it also lets you know about each or feel, so you get to know if you're going to be interested in it or if you're not. Okay. What about graphic designer? What, what qualifications do I need? Honestly, if you're going to pursue graphic designing, you could do it anyway. You could go to university or you could do it without a degree. If you're going to work for yourself and freelance, then you don't really need a degree. And some people aren't confident enough to straightforward go and freelance, so they go and get a degree they work for a couple of years, get the experience, and then start freelancing so they know where the right clients are and where they can look for to get high paying clients. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd like to see where your motivation is. Yeah. Um, my architecture, okay. Um, there's obviously some fantastic buildings around the world. Yeah. What's your favorite? Well, living in Dubai, obviously the Burj Khalifa and the Big Ben in London. So. So what are the career prospects for a graphic designer? I'm hoping you're going to be doing your degree and then you're going to be working. So, um, Depending on which university you go to, you of course have internship opportunities. So I think you should of course grab them and get the experience before you, you know, walk into a real office and work with a bigger group of people. Um, I guess it will give you the experience you need. It will get you a little bit more confident and then once you graduate, then you can go ahead and work for a company. Now, it really depends on which company you're working for, whereas some companies will only hire on for a specific task. For example, whether it's web designing or package designing, and others you can work on a, in a studio, so you'll be working with different clients who require a lot of different types of designs. Or you can, after graduating, you can just start freelancing, which is also possible. It's time for a commercial break. When we come back, I'll be testing these youngsters on their knowledge about the subject they're about to study. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Crucial Choice. We're continuing our discussion on architecture and design. Okay, so now I'm going to ask each of you a question. No prizes, okay? If you don't get the answer right, then it passes to the next person and you'll have a maximum of 10 seconds to answer the question. Mike. What is the tallest building in the world? How tall is it? No idea. <laughs> we can guess. Round figures? As you like. 830 meters? Not bad. That's fantastic. It is 830 meters. Well done. Ruth. There's currently a building that's going to take over the record of the Burj Khalifa as the tallest building in the world. What's it called and where is it? Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's in Saudi Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty good. Okay, half correct. Would you like to take it over and earn yourself a bonus mark? I don't know the name of the building. It's the Jeddah Tower. You got the country, the country correct. Okay, and it's one kilometer. Um, it's going to be one kilometer high. Mr. Graphic Designer, okay, can you give me two popular software that we use in graphic design? Of course, uh, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Okay, love the confidence. Brilliant. Absolutely correct. Oh, okay. okay. Well done. I think uh, you, most of you know your stuff, and you're ready to take on the world in design and architecture. Mike. You want to be an architect. What role does design play in architecture? Design plays a very crucial role in architecture. Not, I would say not only architecture, but everything includes design. It's usually taken for granted, and in architecture it plays a crucial role because architecture is all about forms. So it's imperative and it's kind of related, interrelated? 
it's a very important part of architecture. Do you enjoy that part of architecture? Do you enjoy the part of design? So wherever you go, you see a different form. You see every city or every um, country has its own design, its own structure. It's a huge world. Everywhere it's different. We've, we've covered a lot so far. Um, I'd like to move the discussion to something else. You know, you, you all seem very independent. You all seem that you really know what you want to do. To what extent should parents be involved in your decision as to what degree you wish to pursue and what career you wish to pursue. Were, were your parents involved in your decision to do graphic design? I grew up in an Asian family, so when I said I wanted to design, they were like, what? What? What design? So they didn't really understand design. But I feel like as time passed on and after they saw my work, I guess they kind of understand what it is better now because I have more hands-on experience with it. Um, in the beginning, I did take a course um, at a local institute, but that was totally not worth the money. So if anyone wants to get into graphic design, I would recommend first going through YouTube tutorials and trying on free softwares, and then moving on to online courses and websites which provide online courses for like 10 to $20 for like 20 hours of just on-demand knowledge. And you might use that skill to then show to your parents, hey, in case they don't agree with your choice, but you know, I've got a real skill at this and it might be something that you, you know, are able to convince them and help them see where your talent is. Uh, Ruth, what about for you? Was this something that you decided or was there any influence or were your parents involved? Did you discuss it? Talk me through that, please. Uh, no, my parents weren't involved. I've always been into art and never science or any of those aptitude subjects. And my parents understood that because my dad wanted to be uh, an artist. Uh, but I, I get parents concerned because in the end you need to get a job, work and support a family. But at the same time, uh, you, I mean, you need to be happy with what you do in order to be good at it. So uh, being concerned is okay, but not pressurizing your child to do something they don't want to do. I have a lot of friends who shifted from science to commerce which is, they wasted like two years. Because they were in the wrong. Yeah, their parents were yeah. to take science and now they're in commerce. Great, thank you. Mike, what about you? Um, I would say my parents were 50-50. We were both meeting at somewhere in the middle because my parents have always been supportive and they have a very open outlook, so they didn't really have a problem if I wanted to go towards like an art way, but they also understood that architecture is just not like design and art. It also has technicalities and engineering bit. So they were okay with it. And they were involved quite a lot in my decisions. It's time for another short break, after which we will talk about your higher study options. I'm sure you all know where you want to go and why. Welcome back to Crucial Choice. I'm your host, Raj. We're discussing design and architecture with three young minds. Um, now it's time to discuss where you'll be going uh, to complete your higher education. Let's start with you, Ruth. Where are you going? Um, I'm actually gonna go to Malaysia. One latte, please? Yeah, sure. Have you ever been to Malaysia? Check this out. I fell in love with Malaysia. Uh, yeah, because I came here for holidays and then since then I decided I will study here. I chose to come to Malaysia because I wanted to experience a new culture, especially since I'll be studying design and I thought that the countries are surrounding will provide this most for me. I chose Malaysia as a country of study because one of First of all, it's my dream country and uh, the other reason, I love playing badminton. On top of that, Malaysia is one of the top in badminton at the moment, so that's another plus point for me to come to Malaysia. My parents were very comfortable leaving me behind because, they were, because here the country is very safe. I can walk around, I can use the public transportation. And since it's a Muslim country, I can eat whatever I want. Uh, I came to Malaysia because it's quite uh, economically friendly. 
I chose Malaysia because it is uh, one, a Muslim country, and two, because it is very beautiful and everyone is very friendly and it has good uh, reputation and it's, it has very good universities with a very good reputation all around the world. First of all, I love the Malaysia weathers and uh, they have a good country and uh, Inti University have a good uh, system. Malaysia is a very beautiful country and there's a lot of beautiful places you can visit to during your summer vacations. I visited Langkawi, then Genting, got Cameron, so these places are really nice. The reason I chose Malaysia is because it's a completely different environment from what I'm used to. And so I wanted to go somewhere different and explore and have another experience different from what I'm used to. Uh, Malaysia is a multicultural country and uh, it's comparatively cheaper than going to UK, US. And which institution have you chosen in Malaysia? Uh, so I'm going to be doing a foundation. So that's an Inti University. Inti was set up 30 years ago as a college to provide additional opportunity for the student to uh, pursue higher degree. And of course, because our recognition, because our achievement that we were upgraded to a university uh, and now we are offering a bachelor, master and PhD program. We have a lot of um, initiative and actual project for students to be involved in the industry itself before they even go out to, to practice as an intern or to go out as an um, uh, employee. It's a good choice to go to INTI especially because it is very affordable and one of the best in its own range. At INTI, my program is collaborated with Coventry University and IBM. So once I'm done with my studies, I get a reputed UK degree and equip myself with the skill that it needed to cope up with the emerging technologies. I have a great opportunity to study with the professional lecturers. Also, I have a great opportunity to make friends from all over the world. Why INTI? Honestly, for its affordable price, for the certificate that I can get in the uh, end of my studies, which is British Real Certificate. We incorporating with a lot of professional certificates like Cisco, IBM and SAP. We also in collaborations with Coventry University, ranked number 12 in UK. I like this uh, university, INTI University, because they really care about international students. Uh, they uh, provide us many facilities that we can use uh, for our studies. I study interior design. Uh, I choose this INTI because uh, it has a cooperation with uh, Sheffield Hallam University in the UK. And because when I compare it to any other university in Malaysia, it's better in interior design. The reason why I chose INTI as a study place is because I liked the way their law program was structured and also because it offers me an opportunity to transfer to the UK. Too. I'm having a great life in INTI. The student life here is very charming. I have to say that the reason why I love INTI will be there is full of diversity from the all around the world. It's like a family, like it's small so the teachers know each and every student over there. That's fantastic, so a I UK think, degree yes. in Malaysia, Yes. okay, same standards. Exactly the same. Okay, and yet it's relatively cheaper. more economical. Yeah. What, what could be better than that? That's, that's fantastic. And then what's your plans after the foundation? Um, I'm going to go wherever life takes me, but probably Malaysia, I'll continue over there because one year is a lot, so I'm going to make friends and family. But if not, I'll probably I can transfer to the UK because I'm getting a UK degree. So if I continue with the same uh, institution, I can just go there and continue my degree with interior designing. In Indy, we would like to ensure that all our students, when they graduate, they have, they have learned enough transferable skills that help them to succeed in their career. We manage uh, to reach 99% of employability for our first graduate. So what about you? I'm applying to um, universities in New York and I applied to four universities. 
all state universities, they're public. And the reason I chose public universities over private is because of the tuition. It's way cheaper than private universities. And the thing with graphic design is you don't necessarily require a degree for pursuing it as a career. So the reason I'm uh, taking a Bachelor of Arts is for security's sake. Um, I, of course, want to you know, freelance graphic design, but just in case I have to go back to work for someone else, I'm going to require a bachelor's degree. Very practical, very practical, thank you. Mahek, what about you? Where are you heading? I applied to Waterloo in Toronto and to both of those because they both um, give me a co-op op option. Co-op option is when I get to work as well as study. So that's, what, that's something I really want to do because it gives me a practical approach. So those are my top universities. And so does Bath in the UK. So That's those, quite varied, huh? Yeah. So you're looking at Canada, uh, Waterloo, Toronto, and then also the west of England in Bath. I would go to Waterloo, if Waterloo or Toronto, if I get into one of those, uh, better than Bath, because um, Canada currently has a lot of job opportunities. And so that would be better if I finish my degree there and if I want to settle in Canada. Okay, looks like you've thought this through. And, and what I'm hearing as well from you, Mahak, is that the, the co-op, the opportunity to work, is really important in a field such as yours, such as architecture. I, mean, so I think it's important in, in all fields, yeah. Well, that's all we have time for. I must thank you very much for sharing your stories with me. I wish you the very best in your futures. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. If you have any specific queries about our show, please email us at choice at crucialchoice.org. We would love to hear from you. Until the next episode, it's goodbye from your host, Raj Kapoor.